If everyone would please, okay, thank you. If everyone would please uh, mute their mics if they haven't already. Uh, and if you have a question, uh, if you would please uh, in the uh, reactions, if you click reactions there at the bottom of your screen uh, in your Zoom meeting, you'll see a little raised hand function. So I can kind of monitor that as I go. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, I'd like to sort of have questions at the end. We have a big discussion time at the end. So uh, if you don't mind, I, I'd actually rather we, we hold off till the end. It's actually gonna be pretty brief. It's very similar to last year's presentation. If uh, any of you were here last year, I see a lot of folks that were here last year. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen and we can begin. Okay. What we are going to do right now is go through a real brief presentation. Uh, I have when and what, we're actually gonna have when, what, and web, because all of this can be found uh, on the ARRL site. Uh, this is a summary, if you will, of, of uh, the field day rules for 2021. Uh, as you know, last year we operated individually uh, because of COVID. Uh, thanks to a lot of great science and a lot of hardworking people, uh, we're in a position this year where we are right on the tail end uh, and coming out of, uh, out of COVID. I completely anticipate next year being uh, a normal field day, uh, one that we're very used to. So just wanted to uh, make you all aware of that, that I do believe, uh, I believe next year is going to be the more typical uh, typical field day. Uh, what we're going to do this year, like I said, is it's going to be similar to last year. There are a few rule changes we're going to talk about, uh, as well as some of the points and bonus points, and we'll wrap it up with a with a discussion there at the end. All right. When, what, and web. Uh, I learned this two years ago that field day is always held the fourth full weekend in June. So that's when it shall be. So that would be, if you look at the calendar, the fourth, uh, fourth full weekend this year is Saturday, June 26th, starting at hour 1400 hours and Sunday, June 27th, ending at uh, an hour uh, 1659. You can work 24 active hours consecutively from when you first start if you set up before 1800 UTC. So what is the objective? Uh, is it a contest? What exactly is field day? Uh, you know, you can ask around the club every year we have this discussion, what's field day? Well, it has points, it must be a contest. <laughs> No, that, that might be it. That might be true. Uh, uh, you could think of it like that if you choose to, but that's not really what it is. It is about working as many stations as possible, but you're supposed to do that in light, in the spirit of learning to operate in sort of abnormal conditions, conditions you might not be used to. So uh, maybe abnormal situations, less than optimal conditions. Uh, last year, I operated using emergency power, just like we always do. I think we had somebody in the club last year operate on battery also. But uh, there, we're going to get into different operating modes uh, for field day. And uh, I'll even show you what my QTH for field day looked like last year. I have a picture of my setup, and I thought I'd just share that uh, with the members. The whole thing is to kind of learn to develop new skills. Uh, I think there were a few folks that operated digital for the first time last year. I have a funny feeling that uh, Ed uh, Berkowitz, uh, N3US, I'll bet you he's going to be operating digital a little bit this year, thanks to some uh, folks that helped him get his station going. Uh, so maybe do some new things uh, this year. Uh, and also to acquaint the general public with amateur radio capabilities. 
although I operated from my home QTH, I had seven visitors uh, at my uh, QTH last year. So I did expose it to the general public, or at least how much public there is in my neighborhood. <laughs> And uh, all of this that I'm going to talk about is on the web at the ARRL.org website, uh, just slash field day with a hyphen between the field and the day. And uh, all the information I'm going to share right now is, is on the website. So I uh, just wanted to bring that to your attention. In fact, it's this web page right here. Uh, I know it's hard to read, but uh, ARRL.org field day. And uh, this is uh, the rules, resources. You can get t-shirts. Every Friday, they have some sort of offerings been going on. You're probably getting emails every Friday for Field Day Friday, where you can get some Field Day uh, bling if you want to, OK? But everything I'm going to cover today is on this web page, uh, just arrl.org field, uh, slash field day with a hyphen between. All right. So there are five uh, operating classes that, that you can consider operating as an individual. You can be a class B, a class C, D, or E. Class B is broken down into two parts. You can be on portable power, or you can be on portable with a uh, battery only where you're not operating uh, uh, you're not operating from a generator and that is one or two person so if you wanted to pair up with a buddy and and operate field day you could be a class bravo uh, operating with an, another person and we're going to go through the details of each of these uh, mobile class c Boy, there are some real fanatical people out there doing mobile. <laughs> I've seen some uh, rigs in, uh, in uh, the magazine and, and online and YouTube videos. Uh, and we all know that, that person <laughs> who, has a, who has just an unbelievable mobile rig. And, uh, and we actually learned a little bit about that, uh, I think, in one of our previous meetings. But uh, there's a lot you can do with mobile. Uh, for field day. Now your home station is just uh, just like it sounds. You're just at home uh, operating, or you could be a home uh, emergency power, which is class E. And and we're going to talk about each one of these. So if we look at class B portable, uh, this is what I uh, entered as last year. Uh, these are the rules for that. It's very similar to the club. You know that we typically, I think our, I, well, I know this because <laughs> we did it. We were 3A, 3 alpha, meaning we had three simultaneous transmitters and A meaning we, we were operating as a club, all right? So if you think about all the different things we had, all the different ways you can score, all the different points, that we used to submit as a club, Class Bravo has those same things except for there is no uh, GOTA and there is no free VHF. And we'll, we'll talk more about that. But uh, Class Bravo, no more than two people. Uh, if you have uh, two people, those entries are listed separately. Uh, you can't be located at your regular station. In other words, Class Bravo you don't operate out of your normal ham shack. Uh, and the facilities can't be for regular station use. So it, it's stretching you a bit. You got to be portable, not mobile, but portable. Uh, and you can't use anything that's permanently installed for your field day. Oh, what do I mean by that? Well, let's say you've got an 80 foot tower with uh, two. $3,000 Yagi sitting on top of it in your backyard. You can't unhook the coax, go out to the bottom of your tower, hook up and say, there, I am portable. 
<laughs> because you're using you're using your tower and you're using your yagi. So uh, you can't use any structure that's permanent, including a tower and antenna for your field day when you operate portable. You need to erect the antenna as part of your setup. It does have to be independent of commercial power. So you need to be running on a some form of generator uh, or battery. And we'll talk about battery later. So that's Class Bravo. Class Bravo is actually a lot of fun. Now, one of the reasons I entered Class Bravo is because they had a limitation on Class Delta, Class D last year. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Before we do though, I wanted to show you my QTH. Does everybody see this all right? Everybody should see, it? okay. Um, this, was, this is my home. Uh, I live out here Northwest of Earliesville in Wind Drift One subdivision. I live about a mile and a half North of Buck Mountain Road on Markwood, which uh, if you're familiar to that, uh, it's the road to Dyke, uh, if, if you wanna know what that is. So this is my home. Uh, my normal operating is in the basement. I, you, if you look really closely, I don't know how well you guys can see this or not, but this was my table right here where I set up. My generator is not in this picture, but I had a Honda EU2000i set up over here, uh, way off to the side for noise, so I didn't hear it. I ran a cord all the way across my driveway over to here. So this is where I operated. I used a Yaesu FT990, 100 watt barefoot into two wires. This one you can see here is fed with ladder line. And I know it's hard to see, but this actually is a fan dipole. This is 40, 20, 17, and 15, but you can't operate, is it 17 on field day? Yeah, only 15. So I operated 20 or 40, 20, and 15 on this one. And then about 90 degrees off of it, I ran another one. This is just a 20 meter right here. And this goes from my chimney to, you can't see it, but there's a big old poplar tree up on the other end of that wire. So those are my antennas. Down here was my portable shack, if you will. For COVID, I had a chair here for visitors and I had plenty of folks sitting down. I did a big chalkboard. That is a real chalkboard with chalk. And I, <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote down all the uh, information about what field day was. I had a table here with flyers and candies and a, a hand sanitizer. And that was where I operated. Uh, I did, I did pretty good. I had a, a good, good field day. I operated through a lot of the night and, uh, really, really, really enjoyed it. Again, hundred percent, uh, portable power. I was class Bravo, uh, class Bravo. Now I was not class Bravo with a battery. This is your QRP running off a of battery, five Watts or less. Uh, cannot be a motor-driven generator, cannot be commercial mains. So what does that leave you? Well, you could have wind, you can have battery, you know, wind, solar, something charging batteries. Excuse me. Now, there's nothing here that says you can't swap out your batteries. So, <laughs> so you don't necessarily have to have a way of charging your batteries uh, if you if you run out of battery or your battery gets low for whatever reason. But then again, if you're only putting out that much power, you got a big enough battery, it's gonna last it quite a while. Um, so that, that's uh, class B Bravo with a battery. Class C, everybody pretty much knows what that is. That is uh, stations operating, you gotta be in motion or normally operated in this motion or in motion. Includes maritime and aeronautical. Who hasn't thought about being up in an airplane towing an antenna? Uh, I, I'm an airplane, I'm a pilot, and I've always thought that would be just way cool to, uh, to be up there towing an antenna. Uh, but at the same time, I don't know what that would do. I, I imagine there's a lot of physics going on 
uh, moving your antenna around while you're flying uh, at that speed. But uh, this does qualify for emergency power, but you don't get the five times multiplier because the alternator battery uh, is a motor driven generator, or the uh, alternator battery combination is considered a uh, motor driven generator. And we're going to talk about multipliers in a second. Okay, finally, uh, we've got the last two, class D and E. Class D is your home station. This one doesn't take an awful lot of explanation. This is your in your house operating uh, under commercial power. This is basically just operating out of your ham shack. Now, last year, there was one limitation that was sort of hampering this. And then there was another one that didn't exist that really needed to. Let me explain. <laughs> if you operate, if you operated class D last year, uh, you couldn't talk or you couldn't log a contact with another class delta for points. So delta to delta, D to D, you couldn't, neither one of you could log that for points. Now, they changed that this year. So this year, any uh, a class D can log for points that contact with any station, including another class D. This is a good thing. Uh, this was a good thing. Uh, now, it's an even playing field for everybody, and it really cuts down on a lot of the, the awkwardness uh, of last year. Uh, I don't know if, if you operated last year, you might have heard a few QSOs where this happened and it was kind of a, kind of a bummer for, for other folks. So they got rid of that, that's a good thing. Now the really good thing <laughs> is the power is limited for class Delta to 150 Watts. That kind of levels the field day playing field. Because if you're home and you're sitting on a 1500 watt max legal power linear, uh, you can really ruin somebody's field day if they're sitting there with 100 watts barefoot in the wire. Okay? So if you operate class Delta, probably better to leave your amplifier off. Okay, class E emergency power. Uh, this is, oh, by the way, let me mention something about the about power. Uh, when you're talking, okay, when you talk about uh, power, when you're looking at power for class B or class C, okay, or, or class D or even E, class D is talking, you can use, uh, you can be a class, I'm flipping around too much, sorry. You can be a class B, but the power has to do with your transmitter, your transceiver, your receiver, your transmitter, anything you're using that supports transmission and reception needs to be on the portable power. You can run a cord to your QTH from your home and power a fan, a light, you know, what things like that. That's totally okay to run that off of a cord coming from your home. That was a question I got a lot of, and I think I might maybe wasn't clear on that last year when I presented. So guys, it's totally okay if you have a generator or batteries running your rigs. It's totally okay for B, C, and D. Well, D, you're already inside, but it's okay to uh, to run power out for non-radio equipment. And I actually did that. I, I did have power coming from my house for nighttime to run my fan. And I also had it to run, or my lights and also my fan because the bugs got really bad that night and I used a fan to help keep them off of me. Okay. This is a home station class E where you're a home station, 
but you're running your transmitter, your receiver, your transceivers from emergency power. So this is kind of an interesting thing. You can be, you can be in your home. You don't have to set up outside somewhere. And for class echo, it's no different than running like you normally would out of your shack, but your transceiver and your equipment is powered by a generator, some sort of emergency power. And that's really easy to set up. Okay. Again, new rule for 2021, 150 watt limit. Okay, here are some miscellaneous rules. This one here is really important. Uh, contacts can be phone, uh, CW or digital. Station can be worked once per band per mode. So for every band that's legit for field day, those you can work on, uh, uh, you can work the same station on each band per mode. Uh, so you, you can actually do quite a bit of work with even one station and get points for it. Can't go through a repeater. So you're talking simplex. Now, this last bullet's really important. And last year, we did a great job of this. When you go to submit your score, in the QST magazine, they will publish an aggregate club score, which is a sum of every individual entry that attributes their score to that of a specific club. Last year, and it'll most likely be the same this year, the name of our club is the Albemarle ARC. It's not Albemarle Amateur Radio Club is not AARC. The name of our club is Albemarle Space Capital Alpha Romeo Charlotte. And last year we did a real good job of that. I am not going to get into how you complete the form or how you log or anything like that. Uh, I think we all know how to do that. Uh, I, can, uh, I can assure you that there are people in the club that know how to do that. Uh, if you have any questions about logging, just send an email out. Uh, but it's extremely straightforward. There's a lot of uh, resources out there for logging. But the one thing I do want you to know is when you submit it, that's what you want to use is Albemarle ARC. Okay, let's go into scoring really quick and points. And then we'll wrap this up. Again, this is all online. This is just to give you an idea of some of the things you can do if you want to maximize your score. Pretty straightforward. Uh, phone, uh, as Dennis tends to remind me, is one and CW is worth double, worth two, uh, as is digital. So for your QSO points, it's real straightforward. Phone is one, anything other than phone is two. Power multipliers. If you are under five watts and you're on a battery, uh, that's that five times multiplier. Um, now, that, that is the one where, if you remember when we looked at, uh, it, when we looked at Class Charlie Mobile, when they said that you don't get the five times multiplier because they consider the combination of your automotive alternator and battery uh, motor-driven power, which it is, which it is. So that's legit. So, uh, but if you're, uh, uh, if you're mobile, I do believe you do get that two times, uh, two times uh, multiplier for power. Uh, the, the, again, these are pretty straight, uh, pretty self-explanatory. If you're less than five watts and you're on a generator commercial. So in other words, QRP is a two times multiplier. And uh, if you're, less than if you're 150 watts or less. Yeah, it, no, wait, scratch that. If you're less than 150 watts, it's a two times multiplier. If you operate 151 or higher, 
it's only a one-time multiplier. So there is no multiplier if you operate, <coughs> excuse me, if you operate over 150 watts. So you get two times the multiplier just for operating under 150 watts. This is where it gets real fun. 100% uh, emergency power for, and you all this is, I'm not gonna read through all these. Uh, you can go online and look at these. And this presentation, I'll make it available as a PDF on the club website. But this grid just shows you for emergency power or publicity, uh, if you're in a public place and there are, and that only applies to class Bravo, do you have an information table? Uh, does your message originate, you, you know, the, the message to the section manager, uh, handling a formal message, uh, satellite QSOs, the no repeaters wait for those, um, and the uh, alternate power. Uh, you can, you can what, that, what the last one means is you can go on alternate power temporarily. In other words, you can hook up your radio to a battery. And if you make five QSOs doing that, and then hook back up to your generator or power, whatever you have, that's an extra 100 points right there. Now, that's only available to class Bravo and Echo. Right? Couple more of these, uh, copying the Whiskey One Alpha Whiskey Bulletin uh, for the, they have a special transmitted special bulletin. Uh, if you get a site visit, I couldn't get anybody uh, other than my neighbors to come and visit. I couldn't get any elected officials to stop by uh, <laughs> uh, or anybody from uh, Aries, but I did submit mine by the web and I did have uh, youth participation. Youth participation's a little fuzzy. Uh, it's only 20 points anyhow, but uh, you might want to research that one a bit. Okay. And there are others for social media. Safety officer really doesn't apply, but uh, uh, there are others for, for bonus points. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open it up right now for discussion. I see we have a couple uh, uh that's right. Yeah, Joe made a good point. Uh, your logging computer can run commercial power as long as it's not controlling the radio. Uh, and yes, uh, that is correct. Last year, we did have a drop down. And I did not mention chicken, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, I know. We, uh, I did. Okay, I did have wayside chicken at my field day. So just so y'all know that I ate wayside chicken at my field day, just in, in commemoration. So uh, if y'all want to take yourself off mute, we can go ahead and have a discussion. And uh, I want to go ahead and stop screen sharing at risk, but uh, that way we can look at each other. But if anybody wants to, uh, wants to have a chat, we can. Any questions, any, any comments? Anybody want to talk about their field day last year? <laughs> Couple of questions. Um, under class B, emergency power and solar. Okay. Um, on bonus points, you get a hundred points for, for um, emergency power, and you get a hundred points for solar. Suppose you're running solar and batteries all the time. Do you get 200 points? Is that automatic? Well, who, let, you know what? I'm not going to answer that because I think somebody else can. Didn't we have somebody that ran all solar that's on this call? Yeah, I did last year. Yeah. So, so how did, how did you score it? They didn't, they didn't uh, kick it out or anything. Uh, and, the, and the question also that goes along with it, they say when you operate solar, uh, give a list of your, sol of your contacts made with solar power. Well, all my contacts will be made with solar power. So how do I designate that? I, what, what, what was the, when they said give a list, what form did they want that in? They, they wanted the call signs of everybody you worked while you were using solar power. A, a separate list 
of the solar power at contact? Well, I think, I think this, I, I think that for that, for the one that is emergency power, they say up to, they say you have to have it a minimum of five. Right. So I would just say, if you had 5,000, I would just call you an overachiever. You're still going to get a hundred points. <laughs> you say everybody was solar power. Yeah. Well, no, no. again, I, I would just say you hopelessly overachieved on the, uh, on the bonus because all you needed was five. Okay. Hey, Bob, yes, on the sir. alternate, on the alternate power, when you submit it, if I recall correctly, there's a separate area where you're supposed to list which call signs were on alternate power. Yeah. So you just pick. So if pick you were five. on alternate the whole time, your first five, just drop them into yeah. there oh. and al along with make sure they stay in your regular log and then you'll get credit for the solar. Yeah, you're only going to get, you only need five to get the credit. Yeah. So anything beyond that is bragging rights, which I think is exceptional, by the way. Now, I think it's way, way cool if you could yeah. say my whole field day was on solar. The next question I think was already answered, but it says you can't be located at a regular location. Does that mean on your property? No. Okay. So no, I, can I, I, did, I can legally be located in my alternate, in my uh, detached garage. Yeah, let, let me tell you, well, they said that no permanent structure can be used for field day. So I think the, to be portable, to be considered portable, you can't use a permanent structure if you want to go class Bravo. Are you talking about Bravo? Yeah. Yeah, well, for class matters. Bravo. Yeah, because okay. I actually asked that because my concern was, and, and they actually, if you looked at the communication last year from ARRL, there was a communication where they used an example of somebody setting up in their yard. You guys remember that last year? Yeah. Because we had this question last year. Well, if you're a regular QTH, does that mean I have to go set up at, at my neighbor's yard? <laughs> but uh, it boiled down to uh, the ARRL did indeed last year and I remember this very clearly, uh, they gave an example or something. It was in what, either on the web or in maybe even the magazine. But I just remembered that we talked to this very thing last year and they gave an example of somebody operating in their yard uh, as class Bravo. And from that point forward, we said, okay. And because uh, they, they kind of legitimate, 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 they made it okay. <laughs> legitimized help me out uh i think that's all right but yeah that's that's what happened last year so that's totally totally cool if you want to operate as a class bravo in your yard now your garage i don't think that would fly because the rules are pretty clear that it can't be you can't use a permanent structure as part of your portable operating as, do you know whether that's been the true all along because I know many, many clubs that go out to say a um, a fairgrounds or something and set up and use the shelters that are there for concessions and such. You can't do that. If, if those shelters are in place year round and are permanent, that is not a portable location. And that rule has been there forever. And a lot of people are disobeying it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Bob, a uh, purist would say your chimney was there for a long time. So <laughs> <laughs> my tree. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, what they what they mean is to be inside of it. But you're right. You're right. I could have, I, maybe I could have got dinged for that one antenna. But you know, for what it's worth, my my magic fan dipole more than outperformed it. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, it says you can't use facilities. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, well, it says you can't use any structure permanently installed for field day. So, yeah, you're right, John. My, I probably need to withdraw my submission from last year, and they're going to have to print a new issue of QST. But you didn't. But though, though, Bob, I, I would argue that, that you were okay because the truth be told, that's not a place you normally have an antenna mounted. 
No. I mean, there's a lot, there are lots of situations where we might be in of where, yeah, you might climb on top of a building and tie it off to some part of a building. You might attach it to a, a flag, flagpole. You might attach it to, to something else. And that's not normally part of an amateur radio station. It's, it is something yeah. you know, I mean, different. So, well, but, it, but it's also true that it's not like you went out and set it up last year and now you're reusing right. it again and, you know, that, that type of thing. Well, you know, if you think of our own club, when we were out at Earliesville, <laughs> we we attached to that fire, that tower they were building, right? I think we used a hook of that, didn't we? So, yeah, it's, I think the idea is, you know, a scout is trustworthy, <laughs> you know, on my honor, all that stuff. You know, you're doing your best to be in the spirit of the rules, but uh but Bob, I think you used the phrase the permanent structure for field day. What does four mean? Right. What, 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 I mean, to me, that makes the context is if the structure is there for normal use of ham radio. Oh, then yeah. The actual writing. Okay. I know where you're going with this. Okay. I'm not a lawyer. Don't play one on TV. Yeah. And I've never been divorced. So I'm probably not qualified to speak on this. But if you read what it says, I'll read it verbatim. It says you may not use any structure permanently installed for field day. Now, I think what that means in its entirety is like an antenna, because I think that that's one of the big things that a lot of clubs did is they'd have an antenna out in the middle of somewhere and that was permanent. It was always there. Drive up, hook up to our antenna there, field day. But if you climb up a tower that you ne don't permanent, that isn't normally an antenna tower. Right. And you put a wire and put on an it. antenna on it. Yeah. What's, <laughs> yeah. I think you're within the spirit of it at that what point. Is the spirit of it is to, 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 to build something out of what's there. I mean, yeah. if you think about the real, the real spirit, I mean, it's to improvise, it's to have tenacity, yeah. it's to say, you know, okay, guys, we got to get the word out. Hey, tie off onto that. You know. Okay. Any other questions? I was, I was wondering that the the class B battery really, it's not really so much about battery. It seems like it's really just about low power. Well, if you're operating low power, you really don't need much anyhow. I think. Yeah. But I think they're, they're they're trying to simulate people that are in the QRP, I, you know, I think that whole class is created for the, mm -hmm. for the QRP gang. You know, I, I, uh, when I was in a large state Northwest of here, <laughs> uh, I went the whole meeting without saying the word Alaska in a large <laughs> state Northwest of here. Um, I used to regularly talk to a guy and I think I've mentioned this at a club meeting before, and I got to get in my log. This was back when I was, Kilo Lima for Charlie Oscar up in uh, Homer. And I used to regularly talk to a guy who had his eight year old son uh, and they would go on to these mountain peaks down in, uh, in Vancouver uh, in that area. They would climb these mountain peaks, QRP. And I regularly talked to him. He was pushing a watt and a half. And we all have stories like that. But this guy was the epitome with his young boy. You know, they're on their belly climbing rocks. They set up a station and, you know, they're on a battery. And, and I think that this class is for those guys. If you're, if you're on a battery and 100 watts, you just do regular class B, it sounds like. Correct. Well, no, cl class B with 100 watts uh, on batteries is actually... Uh, that would actually be a whole, well, class B on battery. Yeah, class B on battery the whole time would get you the multiplier though, wouldn't it? I was thinking like with solar charging or- It gets you the you bonus, know. it doesn't get you times five. Mm -hmm. Got it. Times two, I think. I'd have to look at, I, I've never thought of that combination before, but it says here, yeah, the battery multipliers for 
under five watts, under five watts. Yeah. Yeah, it's only the one. The, the, the other thing that was interesting in the way it's, it's well, written. You, get, you would get, let me, let me interrupt real quick. Uh -huh. You would get the 100 point bonus for 100% emergency power. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. okay, let's answer your question. So if you were running 100 watts on battery, what would you get for your Q-sub? You would get two times the multiplier for the power multiplier. So every one of your Q-subs would count as either two, or if they were digital or CW, each of those would count as four, because that's your power multiplier. Mm -hmm. As you're under 150 watts, then you'd get a bonus for operating all emergency of 100 points because you're 100% emergency power. Got it. And you'd get an additional 100 points if you were solar charging them. Ah. Uh, yes. And, and for the alternate. <laughs> and you would also get the alternate power, right? Right. The five contact one. You would get your 100 for alternate. Yeah. Yeah. You could rack up some points. Uh, boy, I hadn't thought of that. I guess the only catch is you have to charge with, it, it sounds like you can charge with commercial, but you wouldn't get the, the solar charge. Like you could plug them in and just keep rotating them out. Yeah. You know, it all boils down to, you know, I, I think the, the big thing is you just want to have fun with this thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and actually that's, that's one of the things uh, I, 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 I am remiss. And then I forgot to, uh, forgot to mention uh, our, our fearless leader. So I will do that now with uh, this quote. Uh, for This was uh, uh, Ed Berkowitz last year. Uh, he said this, he said for field day 2020, now, now we're making it 2021, we will be flexible. We can have fun and hone our skills. So you know what? If you want to hone your solar battery powered skills, go for it. If you want to operate QRP, go for it. If you want to sit in your shack, drink an iced tea, enjoy it. <laughs> I think the big deal is just participate. Just, just participate. Now I will tell you, I do have to come clean and I'll do this on a recorded Zoom meeting that'll likely end up in YouTube again, <laughs> but uh, this year I am, uh, if anybody's familiar with Boy Scouts, I am on Wood Badge staff and uh, our Wood Badge is in September. I'm a troop guide for Wood Badge 2021 and my staff training day is, guess what? June 26th. Well, that's okay. You always got Sunday. Well, Troop 17's first day of camp at Shenandoah is the 27th. So guess how many hours Bob's going to be operating for field day? I'll be lucky to get in four hours, guys. But I'm going to do it. Mobile station. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, does anybody have anything else? And I'll turn it back over to John. How did we do last year? Do you remember? Hey, we did pretty good last year. Larry, you know, don't you? I think you might have it. Do you have it at the top of your head, Larry? I hate to put you on the spot, but you're all, you got a good memory for this stuff. Well, unfortunately, I don't have it on the top of my head. Oh, okay. We did, we did get some compilations together. I'll have to look it up. But maybe we can add that later. I, maybe Jim knows. Uh, I thought we came in, was it, we either came in seventh or 11th. I can't remember which. I, I believe remember. it was one or the other. I don't remember. You know? It was pretty good. We did do well. Guys, we really did. John, do you have any idea? I, 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 I don't I don't have the memory. What we can do is send out an email on it. And what I was going to suggest is that if anybody has any technical, any questions on it there, send it, to, email it to Bob. And Bob, if you want consensus from the group on your determination 
<laughs> please feel free to draw on other people to 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 make sure that we sort of have a common understanding because everybody wants to do the right thing by this thing we, yeah. we want to yeah. we want to do it in the spirit of field day and uh and sometimes the rules can be technical and uh and and sometimes challenging to interpret there hey i just i just found last year's email let's see hold it Hold it. Don't nobody do nothing. Uh, okay, I, I'm looking, I'm looking. Somebody help me out here. Yeah, well, this is it. By the way, since Bob will be hampered only doing it four hours, this is the, the chance for everybody else to stack up. Oh, yeah. I'm... Bob usually beats us into a pulp. <laughs> <laughs> to do it that uh yeah, th yeah this year is wide open for anybody i uh yeah uh, and for all of the folks that are big cw folks i imagine some of those low power stuff has a lot of appeal there a 5x multiplier that that, that could be sweet <laughs> Did I'd, you? Like, I'd like to know how many pints of blood that uh, bob donated uh, through the mosquitoes out there at night oh it was <laughs> brutal and and we had these little green things totally unidentified they got all through my radio. And, uh, oh, speaking of stuff in radio, can I digress real quick and just show you something that's very tragic? Guys, anybody, you guys, you guys are going to appreciate this. It has nothing to do with field day or ham radio, but it does have to do with electronics. I am in tears. Let me show you one thing. Real quick, uh, Albemarle ARC was 14,702 points and uh, with 20 entries, according to the ARRL. I got to stop my stop my virtual background so you can see this. This is a tragedy. And I know this has happened to you guys, but I had forgotten how humid it gets in Virginia. And Guys, you're gonna feel bad when you see this, but this is, if you know anything about audio, this is a Harman Kardon 730 dual powered receiver. Anybody remember these? Yeah. They, they were dual power supply, dual preamp, dual amp. I mean, they were basically two complete systems in one enclosure. The only thing common on this thing is a power cord. It's basically having two complete units under one cabinet, totally full of mold. Oh, what do I do? I, I think CGY has seen worse. <laughs> oh, what yeah. Do, what do you do? That's a discussion for Saturday morning, not a meet, meeting of the entire club. Oh, uh, you take it over to Jim. <laughs> you can't clean that up, can you? Anyhow. Yes, you can. Yeah. Um, huh? You can. I, I, I think me. that I, I think we have a future presentation in the making. <laughs> that would be that would be a great presentation. Anyway, I'm done, guys. Thank you okay. so much. All right, I will. I'm going to cease the recording here. <laughs>